there are many ways to go about building your own multiplayer game world. It's not that difficult as it used to be since many games and game engines simplify that process. This video is out to showcase all the games that you can use, what limitations they have and the difference between a game engine and a game with modding tools. Let's start with the easier option. Some video games come with their own editing tools, which are typically comprised of map editing tools, ability to create NPCs, enemies, change all sorts of stats, but also allows you to add new functionalities provided you're willing to put in the work. Essentially, it's creating your own version of that video game that can either be published as a single-player mod, like in Skyrim, or be hosted on a server and act as a sort of MMORPG or a persistent world. We're not gonna talk single-player here, we're gonna focus on multiplayer, but first, let's get our terms straight. When I say developing your own MMORPGs, I really mean persistent world, because MMORPGs are the purview of big companies, hosting powerful servers that can handle thousands of players, which is beyond the scope of the average programmer designer. Persistent worlds are more like the mom and pop stores of the multiplayer RPG spectrum. They are typically hosted by non-commercial entities. They can handle several dozens and, in some cases, even hundreds of players at most. The difference between any random server and a persistent world is that, like MMORPGs, persistent worlds are online practically 24-7 and they contain persistent data, like the levels and inventory of players, and sometimes even data that relates to the change in the landscape. Now that we got the terminology out of the way, let's make another distinction between RPGs and FPS. We're gonna talk about both, but we'll start with RPGs. 2002, Neverwinter Nights 1, the first proper example of a multiplayer RPG game with development tools, aka Toolset. Those tools came built in with the game and they made the whole process easy to create your own persistent world. Not less important, it came with a Game Master mode. A Game Master mode lets you control anything behind the scenes live, like spawn monsters, change stats, create objects, and etc. etc. Neverwinter Nights 1 is still the king. Neverwinter Nights 2 continued in its footsteps. After Neverwinter Nights 2, it's been fairly quiet. But next century later, we see Worm Unlimited. Worm Unlimited may have been released in 2015, but it seems distinctly 2006. That's because the original game did not come with players modding tools and the ability to host your own server. It was called Worm Online back then and it was a pure MMORPG. There is also Minecraft, but you have to be okay with the boxy style of graphics. For more modern-looking RPGs, we have Conan Exiles, Ark Survival, Atlas, Light and Dark, which are all games with development tools based off Unreal Engine. However, the learning curve for those games is particularly difficult unless you're familiar with Unreal Engine. We'll talk specifically about Unreal later. When it comes to RPGs with modding tools, that's about the list we have. If I missed anything, though, feel free to add that in the comment section. Now, when it comes to FPS games, the king there is Arma 3. The Arma 3 editor was mostly designed to run military simulation missions, but it can also be turned into a persistent world. The game comes with a built-in toolset and a game master mode called Zeus. While Arma 3 lets you easily place objects and build bases, modifying the terrain itself is a bit more problematic and requires a certain learning curve. In GTA V, which is also popular in the persistent world sphere, it's even worse. It doesn't let you modify the landscape at all. If you want to host a persistent world there, then the city of Los Santos must stay as Los Santos. Another honorable mention is G-Mode, which although is a bit of an old game these days, is still quite popular and people made out of it Star Wars, World War II, Half-Life, Stalker, Medieval, Fantasy… Really, there is almost no settings unexplored in the G-Mode universe. There are more games which will let you host and edit your own persistent world, like DayZ, Rust, Unturned, and a few others. But there aren't a lot. We're not talking hundreds, we're talking about a dozen or two, with varying degrees of limitations and learning curves. Creating games while giving players the ability to create their own persistent worlds doesn't seem to be the priority of video game companies these days. Giving players that power to create could be a problem because it creates a sort of democratization of video games. If players have the power to create, they don't really need us anymore, do they? 
Whether it's a fallacy or not is a different topic and not within the scope of this video. When it comes to video games, the best tools remain the good old tools that made their mark and never quite had a successor. Neverwinter Nights 1 and Arma 3 are at the top of the list. There is a reason why both of them are still supported by their respected community. The power they give to the players is amazing. And Neverwinter Nights recently got a makeover and re-released as an enhanced edition, and amazingly is also available for smartphones. And Arma 3 continues to pump never-ending expansions and is still THE name for military simulation groups. Now let's talk game engines. Game engines are basically a blank canvas which lets you create whatever you want, but it also means you have to do everything. So, while games come with character creation screen, movement mechanism, fighting mechanism, lots of 3D assets and all the other features and functionalities of the original game, game engines come with nothing. Yep, absolutely nothing. You have to build everything from scratch. I mean, sure, you can choose 3D models, but you actually have to download each model or package that you want in your game. The real good ones will cost you and all the free ones that you find may not necessarily jive with each other. This is kind of cartoonish, this is kind of professional looking. Hmm. And that process is the same for animation, visual effects, sound effects, code plugins, etc, etc. Everything has to be created or searched and downloaded. In other words, everything has to be built from the ground up. But difficulties aside, there are great advantages to that. Mainly, you could create a game world specifically tailored to your imagination and how the game should be. Game engines like Unity or Unreal Engines will let you do that these days. There are also no fundamental limitations. Everything is accessible and modifiable since you build the infrastructure. Editing tools of games typically would have some limitations. Trying to hack the limitations might not always be feasible and it's often beyond the scope of the average person. The other advantage of game engines is the fact that you can monetize it, whereas with video games for the most part you can't, and if you can, it would typically be in a very limited way. Unity and Unreal Engine are the big two names on the market. There are also game engines specifically tailored to make MMORPGs like Hero Engine, Dimension X, Artisan Engine, but many of them are outdated and underdeveloped or otherwise intended for big studios. So we're gonna focus on Unity and Unreal Engine. Both are good, as far as the pros and cons of each, it's a huge debate and definitely not for the scope of this video. Plenty of good videos on that topic already exist, though I might add my own thoughts on that in a separate video. Bottom line, creating a unique persistent world is a lot of work either way. There is a great learning curve in using any building tools, whether it's a game with editing tools or a game engine. The main difference is the amount of work you have to put in to build the infrastructure. It's not an impossible task, but it will require a lot more time. With moddable games, you actually sometimes need to do negative work and delete or change all the things you don't want from the original game in your game world, which makes building a whole infrastructure from scratch not seem that bad anymore. But if you're not changing the game in any sort of fundamental way, you can have a basic persistent world within a few days. The more you divert from the original game, the more time it will take you to develop features. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope it helped you sort out through games with world editing tools to game engines. Feel free to leave a comment and till next time.